I don't know where we've got the 70 million quid from. He's not worth 70 million euro. I, I just don't see it. This video is sponsored by Surfshark, the best VPN on the market. Surfshark is an app or browser extension that allows you to change your location to access websites in other countries and keep you safe and secure from hackers. Using Surfshark, we here in Ireland can access other countries' Netflix libraries or other streaming platforms like The Zone in Spain for all those important Premier League games. Surfshark keeps you safe and private by protecting everything you do online. Everything. When your device connects to the internet, all that information is, in a way, blurred out. Surfshark is particularly useful for keeping you safe from being hacked if you use public Wi-Fi. Let's say you're in a cafe, you're a college, you're out and about, they've got you covered. Surfshark allows you to use one subscription on unlimited devices, meaning you can share your account with friends or family or that neighbour who's a little bit cheap. On top of all of this, Surfshark offers a 30-day money-back guarantee. You can also upgrade to Surfshark 1, which includes the VPN, an alert system for breaches related to your data, such as emails and credit cards, and an antivirus software for your desktop. Our sign-up offer gives you Surfshark VPN for a little over €2 Euro a month and you'll get an additional three months free. Simply scan the QR code on screen right now or use the link in the description and enter the code Anfield Agenda at checkout. What is up my friends? You are very welcome along to today's Anfield Agenda News Roundup. I'm going to be giving you guys the lowdown on Liverpool's latest injury concerns and a bit of good news on that front. We'll be looking ahead to centre-backs, Piero and Capier being the name that is foremost on my thoughts today. So we'll be talking about him. We'll be having a look ahead to the January market and of course I'll be giving you guys a couple of other bits and pieces along the way. Would love to know your thoughts in the comment section. Please do drop a like on the video and most importantly don't forget to hit that subscribe button. So I did promise you some good news and that is where I'm going to start today. Uh, Pep Linders in his press conference ahead of the Carabao Cup quarter final against West Ham has given us some relief. He has told us that Ryan Gravenberg is fit, he is training and he is available and I have to say that is absolutely fantastic news. I was worried we were going to be without Ryan for a while and thankfully he's okay. We don't know if we'll see him start tomorrow but either way it is great knowing that he's going to be available certainly for the game against Arsenal at the weekend so you can put that in the good news column. Now whatever Every bit of good news, there's unfortunately that bit of counterbalancing bad news. And today it is the news that, yes, indeed, Dave O.C. Cop did post last night that it looks like Alexis McAllister will be ruled out until just after Christmas with his latest injury setback. So with the good news, you got the bad news. But still, it is overall, I think, a bit better than I was expecting anyway, especially with Mr. Ryan Gravenberg. So happy enough to be able to bring you guys that one. Now we move on to another bit of bad news, unfortunately. This one doesn't really affect first team too much but Pep Linders also said that Ben Doak will require a knee operation after tearing his lateral meniscus so I don't know how long that's going to keep Ben out for but he won't be available for the foreseeable so again a little bit of bad news there but not too much I mean Ben's on the periphery of the first team so we do wish him a speedy recovery now getting into the transfer talk I want to speak firstly about Andre Trinidad so Ben Jacobs has been reporting that he is a target of Fulham and that he has agreed a package to take him to the Premier League the important factor to remember here though is so far there's been no agreement between Fulham and Fluminense for the player Fluminense rumoured to want about 30 million pound Andre also been interviewed and said that it's his dream to come and play in the Premier League he watches the league he likes the league but so far Fulham are the only club who have negotiated with his representatives and have agreed the package are Liverpool still at the table truth is folks I don't know at this moment in time we've seen the news this week that Liverpool aren't going to be in for Polina at least that's the news coming from Florian Plettenberg I guess in this case it depends very much who you believe do you believe Florian Plettenberg that Liverpool simply aren't interested in Joe Polina or do you believe Christian Falk who said Liverpool very much are interested in Joe Polina I don't know 
I honestly don't know. I'm looking for your assistance on this one. So, yeah, a little bit on that one as well, as I said. Uh, they also say that Juventus have joined the race for Manchester City's Calvin Phillips. And I did tell you guys that a while ago, that the two clubs that I'd been told that Calvin Phillips was more likely to come towards than Liverpool were Newcastle or Juventus. So do keep an eye on that situation. I think you'll see Calvin Phillips get a move in the January market. Now, I want to speak about Darwin Nunes, and particular comments from Jurgen Klopp about Darwin Nunes. So Jürgen's been speaking about the Mercurial striker and he said Darwin stays in the game. He's super positive in and around games. He's a bit aggressive in certain moments, a little bit in the wrong way at the beginning, earlier in his Liverpool career, but now he's aggressive in the right way. Jürgen went on to say, I'm really, really happy with what I've seen at the moment. The rest will come. We are completely calm with him. Could he score more goals? Yes. Could he have more situation? I don't think so. He has all the moments. Now all we have to do is work on that last touch. So again, a reiteration there from Jurgen Klopp that he has no intentions of giving up on Darwin and that they just need to get that final piece of the jigsaw right and add the finishing touches to his all-around play. So again, interested to know your thoughts on that one. Do you agree with the gaffer around Darwin? Uh, we've already spoken about Alexis McAllister and him being ruled out. Before we move on to the final story, which is the Piero Hink Capia one. I just want to give you an update on the refereeing situation. Uh, firstly, about our two Premier League games coming up against Arsenal this weekend. We will have Chris Kavanagh as the man in the middle. His assistants are going to be Simon Bennett and Dan Robothan. And the fourth official for that game is Craig Paulson with David Koo on VAR. So it was going all right, wasn't it? Up until we got to VAR. And it's going to be David Coote there. And I, I, I'm already going to say it, that makes me feel nervous ahead of this Arsenal game. I don't like David Coote having anything to do with Liverpool game. But they are your officials. We've also had the officials announced for the Burnley game coming up on December 26th, which of course is Boxing Day. Paul Tierney is going to be the referee for that one. So... Cheers, PGMOL. Appreciate that. Uh, Mark Perry and Scott Ledger is going to be his assistants. His fourth official is going to be Graham Scott, with VAR being Simon Hooper. And now we move on to the game coming up tomorrow against West Ham. The man in the middle of that game is going to be Tim Robinson. So he will be the official tomorrow. Um, Edward Smart and Nick Greenhall will be his assistants and Anthony Taylor will be the fourth official. Just a bit of housekeeping there really to let you guys know who to expect. So the big story and the one I held off for last comes from Build via Calcio Mercado. They say that Liverpool are of course among the clubs looking at Piero and Capia of Bayer Leverkusen. But here's where this story gets a little bit strange to me. The headline of it is... Liverpool to be rivaled by Newcastle for 70 million euro defender. Now, I don't know where on earth this 70 million euro price tag came from because everything I'd seen around in Capier suggested 60 million euro maybe in January or 45 million in the summer. I don't know where we've got the 70 million quid from. He's not worth 70 million euro. I, I just don't see it. But... This article goes on to say that AC Milan, Roma and Newcastle are all interested as well as Liverpool in bringing the centre-back to their clubs. So we need a defender. I think most of us will agree on that one. But do I want to see Liverpool spend €70 million Euro on Encapié? I don't know. I don't know. It feels a little bit too much to me. As much as I do feel we need to position strengthen and as much as I do actually like Piero Encapié, it seems a lot of money. But... He is only just 21 years of age, so there's still a long way ahead of him in his career. And maybe he is the next Virgil van Dijk, for all I know. But it just seemed like this price is just creeping up and up and up. And I just want to get your thoughts on it. Would you pay €70 million Euro for Piero and Capier? Or do you think it's a little bit over the top and maybe you'd like to look at somebody like Gonzalo Inacio or uh, Baraldo from... Uh, it was Baraldo playing for again. From... Santos? Is it Santos? It's one of the clubs over in Brazil anyway. Um, I don't know is the honest answer. If you're looking at it from the point of view of removing the price and just bringing the player in, I'd be all over Piero and Capia. I think he's a fine centre back and I think that South American spirit would fit right in in our team. Yes, he has the same agent I believe as Moise Caicedo who of course didn't work out too well for us in the past but I'm interested to know your thoughts on this one. So again, just to recap, we've got good news on Ryan Gravenberg, a couple of bits of bad news on Ben Doak 
and on Alexis McAllister, Ben Dog having to have an operation and McAllister out until probably just after Christmas. On top of that, we gave you guys the news on the officials for the upcoming games and of course a little bit of transfer talk as well. You may have noticed there was no live stream today on Anfield Agenda. That's because I was over on top of the league doing a watch along of the Chelsea Newcastle quarter final of the Carabao Cup. But tomorrow, Wednesday, we will of course be right back here from 7 pm for a watch along of the League Cup quarter final. Appreciate all your support, guys. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section. And don't forget, do drop a like on the video. Hit that subscribe button. And I hope you're all preparing for a very, well, a great Christmas. And hopefully a year of uh, positives for all of us on the horizon. And fingers crossed, a league title coming our way in May. But until then, my friends, I will catch up with you soon. Thank you for watching. Much love.